Hi, my name is Marilyn, and for this Halloween tutorial, I'm going to show you how to transform into the stripper vampire goddess Katrina from 1986's Vamp. I love this campy horror movie because of how strong the visuals and makeup effects are. Katrina is actually played by Grace Jones, and this makeup that I'm recreating is from her striptease scene with body paint by gay artist Keith Haring. Before I get started, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below and subscribe to my channel to keep up with all of my Halloween looks. To begin the base of this makeup, I'm going to be adding a white foundation. This one by LA Girl is actually a mixing pigment. Although it's not really meant to be used on its own, I prefer this kind of formula to the regular Halloween grease paints that get really heavy on the skin. To replicate the geisha-like makeup that Grace Jones wears, I'll be applying my base in layers. So this first one is just to get an even coverage of foundation. So you can see I'm just spreading out this product all over my face and just quickly smoothing it over. The beauty sponge I'm using to blend all this out is by e.l.f. and it's their total face sponge. I like to apply my foundation using the longest side and then using the point to get into all of the corners of my face. I'm spending a lot of time on this base because Grace Jones deserves no less. <laughs> If you haven't already seen this film, I would really recommend it just because it's a really good time. To me, it comes off like a real hodgepodge of a whole bunch of different 80s movies. And even in the style of this makeup look, you can tell that the direction is all over the place. That's not necessarily a bad thing because Miss Katrina really does look like something otherworldly and a really unique take on a vampire. She's definitely the blueprint for the beautiful, idle glampire that's seductive. But I like how in this movie she's also very enchanting and gory. For the second layer of foundation, I'm focusing on coverage and I'm adding it to the center of my face where I want it to be the brightest. This bright complexion really does remind me of like kabuki makeup. I love how simple and clean it is because in the scenes where Grace Jones wears this on stage, it comes across really striking. Since her character literally says nothing throughout this whole entire movie, I feel like a lot of the visuals really do make up for any lost dial. To build up the coverage on this foundation, I'm going to be stamping it on and keeping close to one area at a time. Earlier I was saying how this movie is pretty much a big hodgepodge of a whole bunch of different 80s films, but I also feel like this makeup and the whole aesthetic of the movie is all over the place just because I personally can't really pinpoint what Katrina even is. I know she's a vampire, but in her little lair, like she has Egyptian idols in there, and then she has this tribal body paint, but then a geisha face, and then a clown wig. Like, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I love it. I really wanted to start off this Halloween season with this character especially because although I have been doing Halloween looks for the past couple of years, this time I actually want to do an attempt to do more character designing in my own style. That's why this makeup, although it is based on Vamp, the body paint itself is more based on a design by Keith Haring and the wig is not exactly the same. I want to kind of make it my own and one of my main goals for this year especially was to use prosthetics and my Halloween costume for this actual like Halloween day night <laughs> is going to be featuring a prosthetic. The makeup that I do regularly I would say is more avant-garde so I'm really excited to try out using some more special effects techniques and bring that into my style. Once I've packed in as much pigment as I could from that white foundation, I'm going over all of the creases of my eyes for the next step. I'm going to powder down this foundation using Ben Nye Super White. To apply that, I'm using the flat edge of my sponge. This powder has really good pigment, so I want to pack on as much of that as possible by using the sponge to press that and work it into the skin. I find that this technique makes it more easy to control the powder from going all over the place. I hate accidentally breathing this stuff in. I would recommend washing your sponge the night before or early before you start your makeup just to give it time to dry out so that it doesn't soak up the powder. You want it to actually be slightly dry. I'm moving on to the eyebrows and for this I'm going to be using the Creepy Cute palette by Shroud Cosmetics with their black shade Void. I'm applying this using the Moda Pro Brow Groomer to just slightly fill in my eyebrows. They'll be covered up anyways with the wig that I chose to pair with this look. But even on the movie poster, there wasn't any like defining eyebrow shading. They were just kind of there. 
Next for eyeliner, I'm using the Essence Extreme Black Lasting Pencil and the Epic Ink Liner by NYX. I'm interpreting this makeup mostly as a sort of stage makeup, so I want to make this really dramatic in the eyes. For the inner corner, I'm going in with a really dramatic and flat point. And for the lid, I want to exaggerate it to almost a cartoony Jessica Rabbit level for the shape, really rounded and tall. And I'm keeping the wing really flat. I'm overall just exaggerating the eye shape because in the movie poster, it just comes off as heavy. So this is just my stylized heavy liner. To keep true to that 80s look, I'm going straight in the waterline with a black pencil. I'm also going to take that up onto the lid. This will be a base for the eyeshadow that I'm going to go in with next. I probably should have taken off the white makeup that I had underneath the black. You can see it's turning the eyeliner blue. But since this liner and the eyeshadow that I'm going in with next are really pigmented, it doesn't really matter. Since this black pencil does set, it actually helps in keeping it emollient enough to blend out all of the darkness together. So I'm just going in with that same eyebrow brush to blend that black pencil to the edges of the liquid liner. I'm picking up the black eyeshadow that I used on my eyebrows with the Moda Pro Detail Brush to set this eyeliner on my lid. Using tiny brushes like this is really important especially for graphic shapes like this because it'll help you keep everything within the lines. I'm switching over to an even smaller angled brush for my bottom lash line because if you know me, you know I will blend this down all the way to my eye bags. So this will help me get more control. It's really hard for me to keep that under eye super clean and that's like one of the main points of this look. I'm mainly just setting the eyeliner, but the only section that I get to blend out is going to be between my bottom lash and the wing. The hardest part for me in this look is not adding any eyelashes. My real ones are so small, so I'm going to give them a good curl and add my favorite thickening mascara just so I don't take away from the eye shape and stay a little more true to the original makeup. From what I could see, there wasn't really much of a lash going on. I'm applying the Milani Highly Rated Mascara to make sure I get rid of any of the powderiness from my base makeup as well. My favorite trick is to roll the wand while you're combing it up so that way you get the mascara all the way down into the root. In the original look, there was a silver reflect to the eye, so in order to kind of mimic that, I'm going to be adding some glitter. I'm starting off by adding the e.l.f. Bling Bling Liquid Eyeshadow as a base, and this one does dry down pretty quick, so you gotta work fast. And while it's still a little tacky, I'm going to be tapping on some of the Dangerous Glam Goth Beauty glitter. Mixing different glitters together is so much fun. To finish off the base, I'm going to be adding a bright red blush. This one is called Hot and Frenzy by CoverGirl. 1986 is my favorite 80s year, and of course, I'm going to be honoring that in this look by adding this blush on the high points of my cheekbones. I'm, of course, no Grace Jones, but I can still cut my cheeks, so I'm going to clean up my blending by using the leftover Super White from my sponge. The last step of this makeup is the lips. The color that I'm using is by LA Girl from their Shockwave Liner collection in the shade Outrage. Katrina's lip shape is so dramatic. It's overlined so much, and that means I'm going to draw on as much as I want to. My camera isn't picking up how bright these colors are. I promise you, this is red. It looks almost pink right now. And the final step of this makeup is the body paint. The one that I'm using here is by Diamond Effects, and I'm using just an old foundation brush. The design that I'm painting isn't the one that's from the movie, but one that Keith Haring did later on Grace Jones for one of her live performances. This was the first time I actually did like a body design for body painting, and it was really relaxing. I enjoyed it so much. Since these paints are water activated and I was applying it to my bare skin, it was really easy to go back in and clean up all of my edges to sharpen everything up. I perfected all the body paint off camera and this is my completed look. 
Thank you so much for watching my Katrina Vamp makeup tutorial. If you like this video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below and subscribe to my channel as well. For a closer look of all of my makeup, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Marilyn Mugby. I'll see you next time. Bye!